So as you can see here, this is basically untouched. This that goes here, here, over here and over there, that's a couple over two years worth of work on there. And you can see past there and then all around, all the way here, right? So you can see the color difference, okay? This is all kind of just like a brown, just a little bit of green in one year. Okay, and then you get over here to a couple years and it's just super green, super green, right? And then you get over here where nothing's been done and nothing. I've been watching this variety of yarrow and just not being able to 100% determine if it was different than this, which is, this is pretty typical of the yarrow around my property. What makes this yarrow different is you see the size of these here? Like, look at those. Those are huge. No, these over here don't get anywhere near that big on any of them. I've looked at them all. So that's one trait. Another trait is you see how they're taller? They're, they're a little closer on a bunch and taller than these, okay? I don't know how I'm gonna show that on camera. Back up a little bit maybe here. You see what I'm talking about? And then the last thing is if you just look at the tops, you see how the flowers are less combined. They're more individual, little, little individuals, little individuals. Maybe it's because it hasn't come into the, this appears to be in full bloom and it kind of shows what I'm talking about, you know, so it's a little different than that. Like these all seem to keep come up in kind of a, which we'll see if that's, but it's, it's coming in later and it's taller and the, you cannot deny that these are bigger and these are just beefy. So these are about the same size. So, but I, I'm pretty sure it's a different variety. So I think it's pretty obvious that these are two different kinds of yarrow. It's pretty obvious now all the differences. And now I'm noticing, like this one is the one that I just was like, kind of that's yarrow. But now I'm starting to see this around. Bunch of these little guys. So this is pretty interesting. This plant here, at least currently, is way behind the rest of the plants that are the same variety. But as far as like this part is a thousand times more lush than any other one of them. But it's only got a couple, three shoots now. So check this one out. So you see this one has a much higher flower to leaf ratio, but it's also kind of being challenged a little bit here. It's got this other plant over there, some grass in it, and it's all in some other stuff. But you see it's sprouting up here, 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 new, new, coming in big time. So, yeah, I'm super a fan of this stuff. And here's this guy now. It's major. I wouldn't be surprised to find out if this was some kind of invasive species, but boy, it sure isn't invading anything very quick because there's only like a couple on my property. And they're cool looking. I don't know if 
they're okay for animals to eat or not, but I mean, bring on the flowers. A sign that you have good topsoil is mushrooms. Let's see if the camera picks this up, but right next to the amp, uh, uh, amp bucket, there's a clump of grass that just is so brilliantly colored that it just literally stands out. Like it's my favorite grass by a long shot, but it just the color right now is so brilliant. There's some more of it right here, but the one that really stands out is over here. I mean, it's just such a freaking brilliant color. It's just beautiful. Look at it. I mean, holy cow. I don't know what it is, but it's super soft. I mean, look at that. This is what I am talking about. This is beautiful. I mean, just, you cannot argue with that. It doesn't get any more beautiful than that. Just look at it. Look at the color. Look at that. Okay. Go freaking show me a juniper or a sage that looks this good. You cannot do it. I mean, maybe if you cut like an old juniper apart and finish the wood and make a real nice table. But that's like different. This is freaking just El Natural. Yeah, this is, I think I'm, oh. Hopefully a lot more comes into this next year. Patch of this right here is a prairie dog town. I have a few of these and they're all the same. They all have that kind of whatever plant growing on them because the prairie dogs eat all the grass from right around their place. Probably even from the roots I'm imagining. Another prairie dog nest, town, or whatever they call them. These are getting towards the end of their cycle. Here's an ant mound that's been dead, and you see how well it gets taken over. It seems like the flowers are the first thing to really get into these ant hives and repairing them. Let's talk about cheatgrass for a quick second here. This stuff comes from the Caribbean and it is a invasive species, which I didn't know that until recently. And I've been pretty excited about it until I learned it was an invasive species because it comes in so good, probably why it's called cheatgrass. So this stuff is not good for a few different reasons. Um, because they consider it a fire hazard because it's a an annual instead of a perennial. I might be flipping those around, but basically this dies off 100%, and the and it just starts from seeds again every year. So there is no remaining. So that what dies then becomes a fire hazard according to the reasoning behind people. And they also say it takes over, and then they also like if cows eat it late in the season like these seeds will poke into their mouths and create issues for them so where i've been witnessing this going on and what my opinion is i don't think it's going to take over i think it actually helps the other grass get started because that whole clump now other things will get stuck into that clump and grow and all the other grass is so much taller. This isn't very a tall variety, but it's young. And this is just a little whispery kind of variety. And it is relatively kind of low. So, but, you know, you can just see the height difference. So, you know, some years this might do a little better. But I have a feeling that as the re rep uh, the repairing process progresses, that this will become less and less because as I burn this stuff will burn up and uh, as the other grasses just become thicker I think I'll probably just choke it out so I'm not too worried about it and as a matter of fact like 
I think it's actually doing good in this uh, context because it's growing in places and quicker and it's getting fodder. Like all this stuff that's growing up, this is all gonna land down and create you know, stuff on the ground. And that's one of the biggest problems is there's just not enough hummus in the soil because it's just been degraded so bad for so long. This stuff's pretty interesting. It seems to come up in the like the most degraded areas, probably because that's where the sun's at. But um, yeah, I don't know what it is. But those are little teeny flowers on it. So it's just another one of these indigenous species that has a job of taking the soil from one state and putting it into another state. Like this probably is really good at just really, really thin soil, breaking it down, creating a little hummus, seeds get caught under there, something else grows. So this grass here and that grass there are so similar except for in their color. Like they are so some of the seeds and the shape and everything are very close but just a totally different color. So here is that taller variety, but what I want you to note here is how much taller this grass and that grass are the same kind of grass. And this grass is probably about three or four inches taller. And I think the reason is, is because it's paired up to a nitrogen fixer. So this grass and that yarrow are just like synergistic synergistically loving each other right now because they both are like transferring what each other likes down underneath the roots and I think that's obvious in the in the height difference of the same kind of grass right next to each other this grass is super cool this is like I call it parachute grass because like these little things come off and then fly away and that's how the grass spreads around has a little tail on it that floats it. I think currently these are my favorite flowers. It took me a long time to find them. They're around. I think they're actually growing. So I think there's two things going on here. I think that's a sage and they're growing in the sage, which is probably why they're blooming because I found other ones of this one, but they're not blooming yet. Look at how crazy tall this thing 